Welcome back. Castri South MP Dr. Ernest Dille has made a call for the UWP administration to follow through with realignment of constituency boundaries. It is a move that, if implemented, will see the island moving from 17 to 21 constituencies. Dr. Hilaire says the review is long overdue and should be implemented before the next general election. Jaco Wooding reports. Following a four-hour debate on the draft order of the Constituency Boundaries Review, it was sent to the Governor-General for approval. However, the passage of the bill was not smooth sailing, as all members of the opposition raised points against boundary realignment. Some called for a decrease in the number of constituencies, while others opposed the adjustment of boundaries altogether, including MP Guy Joseph. Joseph challenged the validity of the report, stating that the commissioners did not have the resources needed to adequately undertake this task, and subsequently filed for a restriction to be placed on the Governor-General, which prohibited the approval of the bill. However, given that the High Court dismissed Joseph's restraint on the approval of the report, Dr. Hiller questioned why the MP is still yet to settle the case and to allow the progression of boundary realignment. That case is still in the courts. I think even before that, there was an interim um, action taken by Guy Joseph claiming that the lawyers for the commission should not have been the lawyers and that you know, they should be changed. That went to court, um, I think it reached the appeals court, and he lost. Which means now the case that he substantively brought forward has to be heard. And I think he was claiming that the, the commission was biased in its decision making and whatnot. The point is, he is now in government, and he's been in government for over three years. So he has to decide whether or not he wants the case to go ahead, and if he wants the case to go ahead, the case should be going ahead. If he no longer believes that the case should go ahead, he should withdraw the, the case so the boundaries can now be settled and we can move into an election knowing exactly how many constituencies we will have. Dr. Hiller says time is running out as the 2021 elections draw nearer, and in order to maintain its accountability, the UWP administration must act sooner rather than later. The, the, the point remains, um, it's been more than three years and the case cannot be heard. The time is running out. For you to have proper accountability, you have to inform people way in advance the changes to the constituency boundaries. Joseph has stated that his opposition to the boundary realignment is not dependent on or reflects the views of the UWP as a collective. And regardless of the country's administration at the time, it is a development that he will continue to oppose. For Hot 7 News, I am Jaco Woodin. Three members of the St. Lucia Labour Party say the state of the nation has awakened a sense of duty in St. Lucians and the party will vet through the potential candidates to ensure that they have the best party members. One of the hopefuls who has expressed interest in joining the party is controversial media personality Christopher Hunt. The conversation surrounding general elections has heated up once more with a large contingent of candidates expressing their interest in the St. Lucia Labour Party and running against the current administration. Leader of the opposition, Philip J. Pierre, says the candidates range from all backgrounds, ages, gender, and most importantly, are all well-groomed to take up the mission of representing the people and the party. Young people, people of ability, it just shows that the Labour Party is ready. And so many people are dissatisfied with the government. We have candidates sometimes, we have about six candidates vying for one seat. It's very exciting. It shows our party is growing and people are excited and people are most of all dissatisfied with what's happening in the country. What about the process? What about process? the process? We have a process. We have a process and the process worked in ancillary very well. And we continue to uh, ensure that that process works. And I can assure you, you'll be very excited about the kindness. They are young kindness, they are women. It's a good mixture, you'll be very excited. And are you hoping that the election, uh, the party ready for the election? We are gone? ready, we are ready, we are very ready. As I said, we have kindness coming out, out, out of the woodwork, good kindness. And we hope is that when the time comes to Prime Minister, cause the elections. But we are also hoping that the elections are free and fair because we do not trust the government. So we are we monitoring the electoral system very carefully so that the elections can be free and fair. One person of interest many are keeping an eye out for is noteworthy media personality Christopher Hunt. MP for Castries South, Dr. Ernest Hilaire, says 
The dynamics of the St. Lucia Labour Party makes accommodations for persons with vibrant personalities like Hunt. We have a candidate selection process and which you know has been carefully designed to ensure that we maintain the social, social democratic nature of our party. Our party is a very open party and anyone who is interested and is a member can vie to be a candidate and we have a very clearly defined procedure that we follow. Um, we encourage persons who are interested um, to go on the ground to show their ability to mobilize, to connect, because these are fundamental for us in the Labour Party, your ability to relate to people, to connect to people, and to be able to mobilize um, people. So we're very excited by what we're seeing. I mean, the numbers are really becoming, you know, quite fascinating. People who want to run for the Labour Party, and it shows that people are concern about the state of the country and wanting to put up their hand and say, look, I'm prepared to do something about it. So Christopher and Fern is out in the ring. What do you make of that? Well, I mean, we know Christopher. He comes out of a political family. Um, he is a political activist. And certainly he brings a new dimension um, to the Labour Party. Um, he's a person who is very rooted in activism and on, on the ground and, and popular um, activities. So he again adds another dimension. Our party is a, is a social democratic party. It's a broad-based party. You have people ranging from you know very left of center to center to you know right of center views, and it makes it a very exciting party. And uh, I'm really excited about you know some of the names that we are seeing. Meanwhile, MP for Labrie Alva Baptiste was very brief with his response to Christopher Hearn's political ambitions. Well, it's a very interesting time for the Labour Party and I think what is happening in the country is like a trumpet call to like-minded men and women to gather about the leader of the St. Lucia Labour Party to create that new period in our political history. So it's just indicative of the fact that a lot of people are interested in assisting the Labour Party in getting back to office to return normalcy to this country. Hunt is known for his protests of the controversial Desert Star Holdings Limited DSH project in Viewfort, valued at US $2.6 billion, and also protesting the proposed Dolphin Park in Pigeon Island. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Sola Jalfred. Amidst ongoing support and cooperation from the government and people of Taiwan to sustain growth within the agriculture sector, Agriculture Minister Ezekiel Joseph says the lead exporter needs to take the business of exporting St. Lucian bananas seriously. According to him, efforts by his ministry to improve market share internationally for bananas and for the expander subsector must be met with intent and vigor on the part of the management of Winfresh. As Minister Joseph explains, the matter really does come down to farmers reaping the financial benefits of actions initiated under the new agricultural policy, which incidentally addresses the substantial deficiencies in agricultural trade, investments, and international product placements. He says a recent review of Winfresh's records of export to the UK market is not reflective of banana production on the ground. And so, agriculture officials remain disappointed that their efforts to increase export to the UK market continue to be stifled. The time, he insists, has come to address this serious bottleneck. We have a challenge. The challenge is that the market under the leadership of Winfresh is not given the type of support that we believe they can give. And as a government, we have met with Winfresh, the, min, the, the Prime Minister, along with the leadership of the Ministry of Agriculture, met with the, 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 the leadership of Winfresh, and the Prime Minister clearly articulated his concerns as a Prime Minister and as a Minister of Finance as to the support that we are getting from Winfresh. So much so, like you know, Mr. Ambassador, we took a team up to England to meet with the stakeholders in England and to speak with them and to decide as to, or to get a first-hand appreciation as to what the challenges are and how we can overcome the challenges. Coming from that meeting, again, we met with Winfresh, and in fact, I guess that was, I was discussing with PS. We wrote to Winfresh informing them that as a government, and I want to make it clear, as a government, we're not going to sit back and allow them to stifle our efforts as it pertains to exporting bananas to the UK market. In apportioning responsibilities and breaches to this new export agreement, Minister Joseph says all partners need to be held accountable for targets and milestones not being realized. As a ministry, we are taking a lot of licks because we are very complacent. 
we are very understanding and yes we are but i think the time has come now for us as a ministry as a government to speak out mm -hmm. as to our frustration as it pertains to the support we are getting from winfresh and i'm saying winfresh the leadership of winfresh and i'm going to say here today that if the leadership of winfresh is not in a position to give support to our initiative to our programs and in that case the, the banner industry they have to step out and allow persons who have the willpower, who have the energy to give that support. Because we cannot, on no occasion, we cannot continue to rely on you and Mario and your technical team to get the resources from the government and people of Taiwan and we are not seeing the benefit as far as our farmers out there. The strategic approach taken by the Agriculture Ministry to expand its markets and banana production is seen as a model which can be replicated in other Windward Island states successfully. This fact, Minister Joseph says, should serve as testimony to banana stakeholders that the ministry's efforts to improve the quality and availability of our bananas is well placed. What we are doing in St. Lucia is, is being recognized by the other OECS countries, in fact by the other Windows Island countries. And I can say here openly and can be on the record that the Minister of St. Vincent, the Minister of Agriculture of St. Vincent, called me. And he was mandated by his banana farmers to speak to me as minister and to speak to us in St. Lucia to give them the support in St. Vincent for them to now get back on the international market. And I've been saying so to Winfresh that if they cannot at this point in time, right, accommodate St. Lucia, when St. Vincent and Dominica get back into production, what's going to happen? So I want to make it clear that the time has come for us to seriously review seriously review what's happening at Winfresh and what, of course, are the problems. The Ministry of Agriculture will be working with the management of Winfresh in the coming weeks to ascertain what actions can be applied immediately to address this disconcerting reality. From the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Faye Clark reporting. Youth workers recently got the opportunity to have a tete-a-tete -tete with the permanent secretary in their ministry. The forum provided the opportunity for 13 youth workers to have dialogue on the way forward with the high-ranking government official. As the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports lays the groundwork to expand its youth programming, a meeting of the island's youth workers was convened on Thursday to introduce them to the new acting permanent secretary, Mr. Benson Emil, and to apprise him of their ongoing activities and conditions of work. I was very excited, you know, in my discourse with, with um, the youth workers. You know, I think, you know, this program is an excellent one. When we start thinking to plan and strategize for our young people, you know, we need as much as possible to get the, the sense or the feedback, you know, of young people as well. And given that they, they fall in that category of youth, you know, as much as possible, we need to dialogue with them so that our plans and our, the strategies that we establish, you know, can be suitable and in keeping, you know, with their needs. Thirteen youth workers are currently employed within the ministry's youth work program, supplementing the outreach of youth and sports officers in underserved communities of the country. During the meeting, some youth workers cited the lack of participation by young people in community youth groups and the need for additional facilities to conduct their duties efficiently. Mr. Emil assured that the ministry will look to provide the required support to address these matters. This morning I met with the new permanent secretary and it was really motivating to, to get his feedback and to see the to see how interesting he, he, he is about what we do and how concerned he is about our problems and other situations that we face. Well, I hope to see that all youth workers are fully equipped with all resources that they need to do their work. And I just hope to see that program continues. Maybe if I'm not there in the next two years, that another person, that I can motivate another person to inspire another person to take on the role and to continue this program because I think it's a wonderful program that, that the ministry introduced. The welcoming meeting, we had an interactive session. We spoke about a lot of points, um, training the young persons, developing the, the skills of the young persons as well, um, giving them an opportunity in the community to um, develop themselves holistically and um, 
to um, encourage voluntarism because um, there is lack of voluntarism in the communities. After this morning's meeting, I feel that there uh, we have a support system. So whereas before. Although we would be able to call for support and stuff, but I feel like there is more support now. And then, even with my peers, they're always there and willing to assist when needs be. Deputy Permanent Secretary Mrs. Leota Charlemagne Mason, Youth Director Miss Mary Wilfred, and some of the ministry's youth and sports officers were also in attendance. Youth and Sports Officer Cletus Clivus Jules commended the youth workers on their achievements so far in their communities and is optimistic about the program's future. On the engagement with the youth workers, some of them I would have been meeting for the very first time. Um, they express uh, what they were doing in the communities, which I think is was pretty fantastic. I think a lot of them have good things going in the various communities where, where they work. Um, they, they outlined some of the challenges that they're facing, and uh, of course, it, some of them of, came up with some um, recommendations, and, and uh, I thought the discussions were pretty healthy. Thursday's meeting was held at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports Conference Room. From the Communications Unit in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Jesse Leons reporting. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. Tennis in Glasgow is up next with all the sporting action.